In this video, I'm going to talk about how to replace the battery inside an Android tablet with a power supply. Now, there's a bunch of reasons why you'd want to do that. The first is that if you are using a tablet or some other device like a phone and it's always on, it might swell the battery with age. Now, this is particularly a problem with Android. Um, the Android operating system still doesn't have smart charging. The Samsung devices do, but Android's global OS does not. What that means is that without smart charging, any Android device that's plugged in all the time is going to have a battery that degrades kind of quickly. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can fix that. Now, we learned this at Decent Espresso kind of the hard way, which is we ship out a tablet with each of our espresso machines. And in about a year of switching to much nicer tablets, we've had to replace about a third of them. It's part of our warranty, so the customer doesn't lose, but, uh, you know, we lose. So we really wanted to dive in. And we also don't really like both the financial waste of throwing those tablets out and the electronic waste of throwing them out. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you replace the battery in this. Now, first, why do these batteries swell at all? Now, it turns out that a battery has an electrolyte in it, and when that battery is hot or charging, the electrolyte is degrading. And when it degrades to a certain point, gases get released. Those gases then cause the battery to swell. Now, that causes all sorts of problems. When they swell, you probably should stop using the device because it can cause leakage and shortages and hot spots. And that swelling is actually what causes batteries to catch fire. So if your battery is swelling, you really want to address it either by getting a new battery or getting rid of the battery completely. So you can recover a tablet that's badly swollen and get it back to a usable, almost new state. There are a few different ways to avoid this problem in the first place. Now, the best one is if you're using an operating system that's fixed this. That would be either an Apple device or, in the, in the current ones, old Apple devices had this problem, or a Samsung tablet or a tablet with firmware that specifically has addressed this. And now our current tablets that we get from TechLast have firmware that addresses this problem and it addresses it the same way that Samsung does. And that's namely that as the battery starts getting more charged, in our case at 55%, the voltage starts decreasing so that the battery is much less hot and it's charged very gently. You might find that it takes 10 or even 12 hours to go from 80% to 100% charge because the battery is being so weakly charged at that point. Now, that is exactly the same thing that Samsung is doing. You can tell if your Android tablet is doing this smart charging by downloading an app that shows you the charge voltage. The instantaneous charge voltage when you're on low battery, say 20 or 30%, if you don't have any protection, that voltage will stay continuous even as you approach 100%. If you have smart charging, that voltage will decrease. It might only be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or even 0 0.4 volts, but you will see a steady decrease in charge voltage. Now, the reason they work that way, as opposed to turning the voltage off, is that they keep the battery charging, but so gently as it doesn't really matter. Now, there's another way to solve this problem, and that's to have an app on your tablet, which is talking to the USB charger. That's the solution I came up with for this tablet here. What we did is we changed the firmware so that the USB charger here can be turned on or off with a Bluetooth command. And then I wrote it into the Decent Espresso app so that as the charge goes over 65%, the USB charger turns off automatically, letting the tablet go back down to 55%, at which point the charger goes back on. So the tablet is oscillating between 55 and 65% charge. There is a device out there called Chargy, which is super cool. It is an app that runs on your Android and a little USB dongle. It goes between your USB cable and your USB charger, and it does pretty much the same thing that my tablet app does, except that my tablet app only runs for decent espresso machines, whereas Chargy works for any use of an always-on tablet. This is a TechLast tablet that has already been converted. Now, it looks completely normal. This is the tablet now that we've opened it. And you can see there's this big battery that's been taped 
down. We've made a separate video showing you how to exactly replace this battery with the charge circuit, and I'm not going to go over everything because that does it in much greater detail. However, I want to show you what the tablet looks like once you've converted it, and you'll see it's largely empty. So what we've got here is a tablet that's now largely empty, where the battery used to sit here, we have this tiny little circuit board. And the circuit board has a cable that then connects up here. And that's supplying power to the tablet. This yellow cable is tapped into a place on the tablet that is supplying five volts that's coming in off the USB power here. Now, we've already figured out a really good place to solder that onto, and that video that I'm going to point you to shows you where to solder. But if you are trying this with a different tablet, you can absolutely buy our kit, which will have this PC board here, and two tools. You'll have to use a multimeter to sense around your tablet to try and find where 5 volts exists. The way that this thing works is a little bit tricky because there are four wires here. Two of the wires are live and two of the wires are ground. The tablet sends and receives the battery state and charger on the same two wires. And the way these chargers work is they pulse. So the tablet, if it were charging the battery, would send a pulse to the battery, turn it off, and then suck a little bit of power off the battery to see how charged it is, and then pulse again. So that is the reason why you can't directly connect the USB power directly to the battery, is that the tablet has a charge circuit in it that's pulsing how much charge is there, okay, charge again, and so this little PC board here has a capacitor in it that holds the charge and essentially fakes a battery. So power goes into the PC board, it holds it, and when the power is cut off, the, the capacitor discharges as if a battery were there at 100%. And this thing then, the tablet, is thinking, oh, I've got a battery, and it's at 100%. So isn't that nice? This PC board takes the 5 volts that comes in on the yellow cable, and then it outputs 4.2 volts, which is what a battery outputs. So the tablet is actually running on 4.2 volts, not 5 volts. This is the kit we send you. It's super low cost. If you have a decent espresso machine, and you're having any sort of tablet issue, we will send this to you for free. If you have a decent espresso machine and you're having any sort of tablet issue, a bubble or swelling, please let us know. We will send you one of these kits for free. Or if you prefer not to do the job yourself, um, just let us know. We'll send you a new tablet and you can send us your tablet to us and we will do this. So that way we'll be able to essentially upcycle your now dead tablet and make it work. Let me go through the parts in this kit. There is this big thing and a much smaller sort of guitar pick thing. Now, these are used to pry parts of the uh, tablet open. And then finally, the most interesting part is this little circuit. Now, this little circuit is the power supply. This cable on the end is essentially faking a battery and then this yellow wire is going to connect somewhere on your PC board where there's 5 volts. If you have a tech class tablet, we show you in the video. If you don't have a tech class tablet, once again, use a multimeter and find 5 volts that you can solder to. So you're just going to take your battery out, glue this in, solder this to 5 volts, plug this into your battery, and then close it. And now you will have a tablet that runs completely without a battery. This is a tablet made by Pipo. It's an 8-inch tablet. It comes in Android 5.1 and 8 versions. And for the first five years of Decent Espresso's life, that's what came on this machine. Now, because the Decent is always keeping the tablet on full charge and Android doesn't have smart charging, these batteries do die after 3, 4, 5 years. Sometimes as little as 2, but usually 3 to 5 years. And when that happens, we have been simply replacing the tablets or you go and buy a new one. Now, it turns out that we can 
take the battery out of the loop and just wire them directly into USB and bring them new life. So the battery-free kit that we make for the Teclast tablets also works fine for the Pipo tablets, just a little bit differently. And in this video, I'm going to explain how to do that. So here is the inside of the tablet. Now, what I've done here is I've put the power supply here. We've left the battery in. I've got the wires that were originally from the battery. They've been cut and they've been taped down so they don't short. That's rather important because if you let the battery terminals short, that could cause this to heat up and potentially have a problem. The red and black wires have been soldered here on some terminals and the yellow wire, which is the five volts, has been soldered onto another terminal. This wire that's here is the Wi-Fi antenna and is not part of all this. You're going to put the power supply here on this empty space. The red and black wires are going to go on the ends of here, where it says plus and minus on the ends here. You're going to tape down the battery terminals and the yellow cable is going to go to the last pin of this little IC here on the upper part. So this here is the power supply that's going to fake being a battery. And there is, you can see a red and a black terminal there and a yellow. Now those already come soldered on. And if we follow the red and black wires, you will find they end up here. And this you will have to solder on. So you're going to put one red on the end here and one black on the end here. And the other part you'll need to solder is a little trickier. There's this little IC here with six pins, and you're going to solder it on the far right one there. Okay, And that's five volts going in. And here's a close-up of having cut the battery terminals. Those are the wires that come from the battery and have just cut and taped them down. It's also a good idea because this power supply has a little bit of height to it to put it in this area here that's a bit lower and unused. And once you've done that, you're then going to take this case, clamp it shut, plug it into USB, and your tablet will now work on USB power and the battery will just be ignored. And hopefully you'll have many years of happy usage of your now hacked and no more battery use Pipo tablet. The advantages are many of running without a battery. First of all, a tablet usually dies because the battery dies. It's the first thing to go. So getting rid of that battery means your tablet is much more likely to last a long time. Secondly, you're going to use a lot less power because that battery is constantly generating heat, a lot of heat. You know when you're hard charging your tablet and it gets hot, it's because batteries generate heat as they charge, and that heat is wasted energy. So that is just going to go away. And naturally, also, you have the whole eco-waste of batteries and replacing them. That goes away as well, and this super small circuit replaces it. Now, what are the cases in which you want to install this? There's a few I can think of. One is I have an old Renault car that has no car computer in it, and I have a tablet on my dash, and I'm constantly having to deal with the fact that it's discharged. If I were to wire up this way, I could plug it directly into my cigarette lighter, and it would always be running when my car is generating power. It also means that the battery is not constantly cycling up and down or suffering with the weather, Basically, my car computer is now cycling on and off with my car. The same sort of thing here. The espresso machine is always supplying USB voltage, so the tablet is on even if the machine is off. This lets the tablet, for example, wake up the machine at various times, respond to other apps, all sorts of things. And it's useful to have the tablet on, not generating heat, using as little power as possible. Another common use would be a point of sale system that has a tablet that's always on. Again, batteries causing issues there because is it plugged in all the time? If so, your tablet's going to swell and die. Much better to just have a tablet that's always on. And then finally, you'll see tablets, especially large ones, 
in areas where people are doing their own guided information. You go to a shopping mall or a shop and you can get product information. Those things are always plugged in and those batteries are swelling and dying. This kit just gets rid of that whole problem. One thing to note is your tablet might get confused with the power supply and it might say that your battery is low. It'll still work. Um, that's because the sensing of the voltage on the power supply is faking a battery. And sometimes it might think 100%, sometimes it might think very low. It doesn't matter. The tablet is going to work with this charge. If you've got any questions about how to hack your Android tablet so that you don't have to use a battery so you can run off USB power, please ask below. This is not just our experience, a hard one. Everybody out there, if you Google tablet battery swelling, you will see this happen so often. As far as I know, no one's really solved this problem for people who want their tablets always on. This little kit is super inexpensively priced because we just want to get out there and have fewer batteries blowing up, destroying things, and, you know, be nice to make a friend. 